I just remember thinking, yeah, sure, like it can't be that hard. I was obviously stupid. It's 18. <laughs> and, um, and so, and back, that was back in the day when fitness was, you know, cheap. There wasn't, you know, 12 treadmills at X amount of dollars. So we opened the gym for $25,000. Wow. And, um, and I think from there it was like, yeah, well, this is, this is fun. We get to like, we didn't know anything, but obviously we got to learn so much and implement things and try things. And, and it was just an amazing time, I think, you know, and, and I really restrict how much information I get and how much, and what I seek out is, you know, is much more important to me than being bombarded with information. Mm. So I think, you know, my, my, my parents were always like, did you see on the news this, this, and this, and this, and this? And I'm like, no, mm. yeah. <laughs> I didn't because it's negative. And mm. I just, I, I don't, that just changes the way that I view the world and changes the way that I see things. So it's important, I think, to know what's going on, but there's too much information sometimes driving our actions. Mm. And I think that then, um, that challenges our mindset to be able to really be expansive and, and, and think about things in the way that we see the world versus being told how we should see the totally. world. Totally. No, I think I think the biggest challenge that we have is is being disciplined enough to stay simple mm. in our life because there's there's so much opportunity to do mm. anything that we want to do and there's so much information that was just overwhelming. And so I think that the discipline for me over especially over the last few years has really been how do I just strip things back and simplify things because the more complicated things get, the more stressed you are and the more that you just have no clarity. Yeah. And so for me, it's just about, that's not important. I'm not interested in that and not even thinking about it. So I think, mm -hmm. but it is definitely discipline to do that. So much talk about social media, but I think just really limiting how much time um, is spent on it. Cause you could just be on there for so long, which takes <laughs> up so much of your day, but it also takes you down rabbit holes mm, yeah. just from a mindset. It takes you down. Oh, I wonder if, you know, and then it's like, Oh my God, I've just wasted 30 minutes. So mm. I really limit social media. I don't really, I don't really know what's going on with the news. I never watch the news on TV. Cool. Um, and so I think I just really try and limit, you know, what do I want to know about and learn about? And I'll seek that out versus watching something that could, you know, spend 30 minutes and I'm like, I just didn't want to know any of that information. Yeah, I think we're just polar opposites, Yeah. like in every way. So I think that's what, I think that's why it works is that, um, you know, we have totally different skill sets. So when something came up that had to be done, it was always really obvious which one of us would do it. Okay. Whereas I think if we were similar, it would be like, well, I'll do that. I know I might do that. Whereas now it's just so obvious that he would do that and I would do this. So that's why I think we, and we worked together since we left school. And so for us, it wasn't really, um, people always ask us and we're always like, it's not a big deal. Like I don't mm. understand, I kind of don't, under we don't understand why it's a big deal. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that we're opposites just made it so simple. I think it's critical, but it, you're right. It's a skill that you have to learn to mm. do and it's not comfortable. Like it's never, you're never like, oh yeah, I can't wait to have this conversation. It's always <laughs> like, okay, we need, we need to sit down and do it. But you're right. Once you've had it, you're like, oh, I feel so much better and things are so much clearer and, and everyone's, you know, everyone's moved forward from it, but it's, we need to learn to accept that as something that we have to do and not avoid it. I think, mm. you know, we, we didn't know what was going to happen, but what we truly <laughs> believed was this is absolutely the right thing for us to do. And it was so crystal clear to us. And so we just had to be able to be strong enough, I guess, to say to people like, I appreciate that you don't think it's going to work, but we, we, we do. So, and I think that that's, that's a great lesson that mm. we, you know, constantly, it's constantly people, I think viewing what I do or what I've done to be weird or whatever it is, but it's just like, I'm not really interested in what they think and I'm not really interested in their point of view because I just know what I want to do. But I think it wasn't until I started to get a bit older that I was like, actually, it's less about the external output and it's more about what happens for me in my mindset when I exercise and how much better I feel during the day. Not just, it's not just the physical part that I start that I think people People are like, oh, you should go for a run or you should go for a walk. It's like, yes, physically you should, but your mind state changes by doing mm. it. And the mm. discipline, the discipline of exercise in itself is, um, is the challenge that we should be all taking on. And I think that people are like, oh, I can't run. It's like, you can run, you're choosing not to run. <laughs> and so I went in 2014 to Malawi with, um, with business chicks and you see the work of the hunger project and totally changed my view on you know what I would probably do next and I was lucky enough to spend time at, um, with Kathy Burke who was the CEO of the Hunger Project in Australia at the time for a week and I just and Kathy pushes pretty hard in terms of 
you know, expansive leadership. And she was just, I just remember saying to me, she was just like, what else could you do? And I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and so Humankind was really born off that trip. So we were there for five days. And in 2015, in May, we launched the Humankind Project. Um, and I remember meeting uh, a number of women, but Christina was one of them. And she had three children. I obviously had three children at the time. We were the same age when I first went, I was 40. And um, she, we were just talking about, you know, what are your hopes for your life and what are your aspirations? And it was exactly as our aspirations. I would love my kids to go to school. I want them to be healthy. I want to build a great house. I want to start a business. No any different. But when you see a third world country and you go, okay, they have to walk 10 kilometres to get water every day. Um, they don't have any money. They have to grow their own food. And if there's a flood, there's no food. You just, you, you just see the world so differently and I think you see your opportunities so much more clearly as to what we have access to instead of focusing on the things the small negatives in our life we should be focused on being grateful on that you know we have all of this at our feet you know